Hello everyone, I'm Chris, and this is every Spider-Man movie ranked from worst to best. Real quick, if you're watching this video and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to click that subscribe button and click the bell to know anytime we upload a new video. After having a few weeks to sit on our thoughts and opinions of Spider-Man No Way Home, we thought it'd be fun to see how it stacks up compared to the other 8 Spider-Man films. And if you haven't seen some or any of the Spider-Man films that we listed in our description, then you should go check those out first before coming back and comparing your rankings to ours. But of course, this video is just for fun, and it's okay if our rankings are completely different from yours. But without any further ado, here is every Spider-Man movie ranked from worst to best. In last place, at number 9, we have The Amazing Spider-Man 2, released in 2014. I wouldn't say any of these movies are necessarily bad, but The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is pretty close to it. Andrew Garfield was as good as he could have been with the writing he was given, but that writing was mostly unfunny and cringy. Same with Jamie Foxx as Max Dillon, aka Electro. I personally did not like Max's weird obsession with Spider-Man, and him being an unrealistic weirdo made it hard for me to sympathize or care about him. But I think Electro was actually pretty solid, and the fight scenes between him and Spider-Man are very good. Dane DeHaan's Harry Osborn was one of my least favorite characters of any superhero movie that I've seen so far. And although he was much better as Green Goblin, it still wasn't great, and his character as a whole felt really unnecessary. But the entire sequence between Spider-Man, Gwen, and Green Goblin that led to Gwen's death at the end was beautifully done and almost made me forget how bad the movie was. But I was quickly reminded by Rhino's appearance at the end. And the Peter and Gwen stuff in this movie until they officially decided to get back together was painful to watch. Number 8 we have The Amazing Spider-Man released in 2012. I know I'm main criticism of this movie is that Andrew Garfield is too cool to be Peter Parker, but to me he doesn't come off as cool at all. He kind of just looks like he's trying too hard to look cool, which isn't necessarily a good thing either. But I did really enjoy this movie and I think Andrew was pretty good, although I wasn't a fan of some of the acting choices he made, but that could have just been how the studio wanted him to act. Once again, the writing wasn't the best and was cringe and unfunny at times, but not nearly as bad as the second one. And even if it wasn't a necessary addition, I did like the deeper look at what happened to Peter's parents. And I think everything between Peter and his Uncle Ben was great, including everything that leading up to his death and Peter's transformation into Spider-Man was mostly pretty well done. But Reese Ifans as Dr. Kirk Connors aka the Lizard was amazing and is probably my favorite character of the two Amazing Spider-Man films. The fight scenes were once again great and one thing I will say about the Amazing Spider-Man films is that they are two visually impressive movies with some very well done shots. I didn't really enjoy the Gwen and Peter stuff in this one either but I can't deny Andrew and Emma Stone had great chemistry and I did really like Gwen's father George Stacy's character as well as the final fight. Number 7 we have Spider-Man 3 released in 2007. Although Spider-Man 3 might not have the most coherent plot, I think it being one of the funniest superhero movies of all time partially makes up for it. This is probably Tobey Maguire's best performance of the Raimi trilogy, and I love that he really bought into all the Bully Maguire stuff, even if it didn't work for everyone. But I really don't like the way Peter's character acts before coming into contact with the symbiote, and it doesn't make sense how inconsiderate and oblivious he was when it came to MJ, even if MJ wasn't great in this movie either. I also didn't like how it felt that the villains were split into separate sections of the movie instead of having each of their stories progress throughout the movie. Harry having amnesia for the first half of the movie sucked, Sandman was on screen and then he was gone for a while and then he was back and then he was gone again, and Venom didn't show up until the last 25 minutes. I did like Eddie Brock though and I thought he had a genuinely funny character but Venom left a lot to be desired. Thomas Hayden Church was very good as Sandman although I don't really like how they tied his character into Uncle Ben's death but it was a good motivation for Peter to don the black symbiote suit which is an all-time superhero costume. And Harry vs. Peter wasn't nearly as good as it should have been and it felt like they kind of wasted the build from the previous two movies but their team up and Harry's subsequent death was pretty good even if them teaming up didn't make the most sense. But even with everything wrong with this movie I still find myself enjoying it and wanting to go back and rewatch it. And number 6 is Spider-Man released in 2002. The original Spider-Man is easily a top 5 superhero origin story and is filled with iconic moments such as Peter's first time using his powers, the upside down kiss between him and MJ, and of course the with great power comes great responsibility quote from Uncle Ben. Tobey Maguire was great and endearing as a dorky Peter Parker and Willem Dafoe stole the show as the Green Goblin. I would have preferred Green Goblin's motives to be more fleshed out but Dafoe still made the character very entertaining to watch. J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah James was hilarious in every scene he was in and was a standout in each film of the trilogy. I also think Peter and MJ's love story was really good, even if Toby and Kirsten Dunst didn't always have the best chemistry on screen. The campiness didn't always work for me. You mess with me, you mess with New York! You mess with one of us, you mess with all of us! But I'd say I enjoyed it more often than not, and I really liked the style of the entire trilogy. And number 5 is Spider-Man 2, released in 2004. 
I know a lot of people believe that Spider-Man 2 is not only the best Spider-Man movie ever, but the greatest superhero movie of all time. And I do think there's a valid argument for that opinion. But to me, there are three Spider-Man movies that I'd rank higher. It's still an amazing movie with a great hero and a great villain. Toby was of course great once again, but Alfred Molina as Doc Ock was incredible and is one of my favorite supervillains of all time. And the fight scenes between the two are also great, especially the one that begins at the top of the clock tower and travels down onto a moving train that Peter amazingly manages to stop after Otto destroys the train's speed bar. Peter's story arc in this movie was amazing, and even if I don't feel that Toby's is the best of the three live action Spider-Man, I would definitely say his Spider-Man has the best circumstances surrounding him to form a Spider-Man story. And J.K. Simmons was great once again, of course. Number 4, Spider-Man Far From Home released in 2019. Spots 3, 4, and 5 on this list are extremely close, and if we made this video again at a future date, they'd probably be shifted around a bit. But as of now, we have Far From Home in the number 4 spot. Tom Holland is in my opinion the best live action Spider-Man, and he of course puts in a great performance in this film. I think the love story between him and MJ was also really good, and they are probably my favorite couple of the Spider-Man films. Jake Gyllenhaal was great as Mysterio, and I think the twist revealing Mysterio to actually be a supervillain was really well done. Though Justin said it was hard for him to suspend his disbelief when it came to the illusions Mysterio was able to create with the Jones, even in the MCU. But the fight scenes involving Spider-Man and the Jones looked incredible, and the film was very entertaining, and it left off with a great cliffhanger in the mid credit scene. Number 3, Spider-Man Homecoming released in 2017. Spider-Man Homecoming is a near-perfect coming-of-age story that features a superhero as its main protagonist. The high school environment of this film was a nice change of pace from the rest of the MCU, and it was great seeing Peter acting as a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man for a good bit. And Spider-Man's main antagonist of this film, Adrian Toomes, aka the Vulture, was just as great as any other live-action Spider-Man villain, and Michael Keaton was perfect in the role. The twist revealing Toomes to be Peter's love interest Liz's father was fantastic, as well as the car ride scene following it where Toomes realizes Peter's secret identity. I also love the scene where Peter is buried under basically an entire building by Toomes, and although he at first calls for help, he realizes that he is the help and powers his way through the rubble. And I personally think Iron Man was great to be a father figure for Peter, and they had great chemistry with one another. The only gripe I have with this film is that I just really didn't like Liz, but my disliking of her didn't take away from the movie as a whole. Number 2, Spider-Man No Way Home released in 2021. Quick spoiler for anyone who hasn't seen No Way Home, and if you want to keep watching the video while skipping over this part, just skip to the time on the screen. Although it might not have been a perfect multiversal story, no Way Home is still an incredible movie, and there are very few movies I'd say I enjoyed more. Tom Holland had an incredible performance, but somehow Willem Dafoe managed to have a performance just as good, if not better. Seeing him, Alfred Molina, Jamie Foxx, Reese Ifans, and Thomas Hayden Church reprise their roles from previous films was great, but the standouts to me were definitely Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and Electro. I'm really glad they were able to fix everything The Amazing Spider-Man 2 got wrong with Electro, especially with his new look, although it didn't necessarily make the most sense for him to be in the movie, since the spell Doctor Strange cast supposedly only brought in people that knew Peter Parker was Spider-Man, and we never actually saw Electro learn his secret identity before his death in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. But it's best not to think too much about that, and I think they did a great job to put together three Spider-Man universes in a way that didn't really retcon anything, which is really much harder than most people think. And there were some truly great and heartbreaking scenes in this movie, such as the Doc Ock fight scene on the bridge, Peter's fights against Green Goblin, Aunt May's death, and of course the return of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. They both put in great performances, but Andrew really stole the show, and made up for any criticism he was given after the Amazing Spider-Man films. And No Way Home has one of the saddest endings of any movie I've ever seen and genuinely had Justin fucked up for days after the fact. There's a lot of fan service in this movie, but I think there's just as much incredible storytelling to go along with it. And at number one, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, released in 2018. Although we definitely saw the Raimi Spider-Man movies when we were young, Into the Spider-Verse is the first Spider-Man movie we actually remember watching since we didn't get into superhero movies until a few years ago. And after re-watching every Spider-Man movie, Spider-Verse still takes our top spot. This movie is really a work of art, and the visuals are some of the best of any animation movie that's come before or since. It tells a great Spider-Man origin story for Miles Morales within a perfect multiversal story, integrating multiple variants of Spider-Man, with my favorite being Jake Johnson as Peter B. Parker. There were a lot of characters in this movie, but they were all well fleshed out, and the relationships built between the characters were great, particularly that of Miles and his Uncle Aaron, and it made the Prowler as a villain that much better. There were so many great scenes, from Spider-Man's death, to Prowler's death, to Miles' leap of faith, but my favorite is the final interaction between Miles and Peter, with Miles giving him the same advice Peter gave him earlier, and the soundtrack of this movie is one of the best of any movie I've ever seen. The portrayals of Kingpin and Doc Ock were also amazing, and the final fight scene including them, and all of the Spider-Man and Woman was perfect. I really have no complaints about this movie, and I can't wait for the sequel releasing October 7th, 2022. And that was our ranking of every Spider-Man movie to date. We'll put our personal rankings on the screen, mine on the left, and Justin's on the right, in case you're curious to see how my rankings compare to Justin's, and how both of our rankings compare to your own. If you like this video, make sure to drop a like, and subscribe to the channel, and let us know 
know in the comments what rankings you want to see next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.